Uh, you're listening to K4CO Radio in Colorado, and we are joined now by a couple of special guests, Dom and Jericho from the FACC, Filipino American Community of Colorado. Welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for uh, yeah. having us. You we appreciate bet. you. Well, let's get started. Tell us a little bit about Filipino American Community of Colorado. Yeah, so our community started back in uh, 1954, and it was called the... Uh, uh, Colorado Filipinos of the Rockies uh, back uh, back in the day um, but our organization is about celebrating our heritage and culture uh, but also taking on a more significant role in our community uh, so doing community service work and doing what we can to to be part of the community and help out nonprofit I forgot to mention yes uh, yeah. nonprofit uh, all of our community members and board members, we are 100% volunteers. Excellent. How long have you been involved, Don? Uh, for myself, you know, uh, off and on, you know, I found the community when I moved out here back in the, oh, 1997. Some, somebody told me there was a Filipino community and uh, they had like a festival. So every now and then I would go to the festival because there's not too many Filipinos so I can get Filipino food. <laughs> um, so off and on over the years for 20 years and then um, just found myself trying to figure out how I can get myself more involved. So I used to do uh, uh, different events for Heritage Camp, uh, which was part for the Filipino community where I would teach kids how to do like make kites and uh, um, some arts and craft and kind of slowly got my way into uh, being part of the community. So part of, the, of a board of about four years uh, right now. And you mentioned you moved from Hawaii? Yes, I grew up in Hawaii, that's correct. And did you move straight to Colorado from Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. so I uh, graduated from University of Hawaii, and uh, I had a friend who was already out here who grew up in my little town of 2,000 people in the middle of the pineapple fields. He was like, hey man, uh, you want to come check out Denver? Uh, and I graduated from college, like, you know, I had nothing better to do, so I was like, you know what? I'll go check it out. And, it's a bit uh, of a culture shock. <laughs> just a, uh, I remember just uh, on the plane, uh, the the pilot was talking about, hey, we're, we're having another s- stretch of negative 20 degree weather. <laughs> and, uh, Great timing. <laughs> all I had was a flannel. I'm not lying. That's all I had was this green, ugly flannel. Uh, and that was my, I guess, my winter coat for the time. <laughs> for about two days until yeah, you... Yeah, <laughs> I, I learned about that uh, quick. So. How about you, Jericho? What's uh, your involvement? How long have you been with the uh, FACC? Been with the FACC for about, a, I, guess, I guess, a year and a half now. Uh, me and my wife moved out to Colorado about four years ago, going on five, um, for some of my university stuff. and. Um, she's Filipino, so she was looking for a way to get involved because um, we didn't really have that uh, back in Oklahoma where we were from. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so she got involved first um, doing a, a dance workshop. They hosted a dance workshop, and our president, uh, Vivian Norman, quickly pulled her in and <laughs> got her more involved. And then they asked me, like, do you want to dance? Do you want to do stuff? And so kind of got bamboozled in there to, to work with the FACC volunteer and all that. And it's, it's been a really great and fulfilling right. experience. Just embraced it. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, tell us how you help your community of Philippine. Being a nonprofit, that's kind of an obvious question. But... Right. So, uh, first of all, right. Celebrating heritage, uh, through festival and events. Uh, we do have programs where uh, Jericho, they dance. We have like our cultural dance group. We have the youth group. Uh, we have language classes. And, and for me, it's about, you know, in Hawaii, everybody's a minority. So the idea of having an organization of Filipinos specifically was kind of foreign to me. Um, but for me, I kind of learned a lot of my culture through the elders and the people in my community. And, you know, when I was here in Colorado, um, you know, I was trying to think of uh, ways to see how I can share my culture with my kids. You know, mm-hmm. they know the Colorado culture, <laughs> basically, right. but they didn't know uh, about the Filipino culture. So uh, for me, how I help the our community, it's about really about the next generation, trying to teach them about the 
uh, being Filipino, what it is, learning about our cultural dance and some of the foods. And, uh, uh, you know, we're a sharing community and just kind of sharing our culture within the, the folks who live in Colorado, who never grew up in the Philippines, but wanted to identify themselves to see what their culture is about. You know, that's where I think I can, I can benefit or help the most from. Yeah. I'm looking at your website and I've learned a lot of, about it. Um, and you have these proclamations on there that I found really interesting. Um, they're a little hard to read because <laughs> the print is so small. Um, but, but just very interesting and with historical value. Like I said, I, I learned something. Do you know, just off the top of your head, because it is almost impossible to read unless I really zoom in on it, um, about these proclamations. You have the State of Colorado Proclamation, and then there's Honorary Philippine Independence Day, which was just only in... 2009 seems like a little late on that <laughs> uh, you know something that we you know i think in, in the past that we were very enclosed in just about who we are in our membership and that's who we were and so a lot of the things that we did was just to benefit them but as you know there's less Fili or there's more filipinos coming in and how do we get younger as a community we had to figure out a way to kind of reach out to uh, to the government, to the state right. of Colorado, to kind of say, you know, here we are. This is who we are. There is a Filipino American uh, community here in Colorado that you can be a part of. So, um, so just kind of a way of sharing and just trying to make ourselves bigger, so yeah. people know who we are, so they can find us. Right, put, <laughs> kind of put you on the map. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's what that's what those proclamations are for. Yes, these are nice to have. That they, that kind of. Were identified by the state, by the city, by the mayor. These are these are great. Um, and as soon as people get to know us a little bit, you know, we're just more than just kind of a Filipino culture. We're, we're active in our community. Right. Uh, you know, especially during the, the the pandemic, where we kind of switch gears. Uh, you know, we're a nonprofit. We own our own building. You know, how do we continue to survive? And the best way there was a need in our community to help our elders. You know, the, our seniors and um, you know, opening up our community to um, vaccination clinics and um, setting up those COVID tests um, that we had weekly. Uh, wow, so, yeah. uh, and there was a huge need, you know, during that same time, um, during the pandemic, the, the, the homeless population was getting bigger and bigger and starting to get problems. Uh, people were just moving out and they were out, found, found themselves out in the streets. So we kind of just uh, found a way to get ourselves involved and um, kind of rally the community in these big needs that we had in the Denver metro area. So the proclamations are, are great. You know, if the people can find out who we are uh, and then they can kind of learn about all the different things that we do uh, to serve our community. Yeah. So It is a very interesting, not knowing a lot about it, mm -hmm. clearly, but it looks like a very familial, colorful, and interesting culture. And uh, like I said, your website is very interesting. Um, we're going to be back. We're going to take a little quick music break and learn more about Filipino American Community of Colorado. And we are back with Dom and Jericho from Filipino American Community of Colorado, the FACC. And um, you are based out of Edgewater, correct? That's correct. And I like the name of your house. Am I, correct me if I'm saying this wrong. Bahay Kubo? Pretty close. Uh, Bahay Kubo. Bahay Kubo, which translates to... Little House. Correct. That's perfect. Uh, Jericho, you were recently in Bulgaria. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of prep went into that. It was sort of a last-minute thing. Um, our choreographer, Eric, who's based out of uh, San Francisco, um, has been there before, and so they had contacted him um, to see if they could get um, a Filipino representation in their festival series that they were doing in Bulgaria. Um, and then he contacted us, and we worked that out to where me and um, two other dancers, um, as well as our vice president at the time, um, Quentin, uh, were able to go and represent the Philippines and the Filipino-American community. Um, so it was about two weeks in Bulgaria. We did three different cities. Uh, we did uh, the capital city, and then uh, Mesdra and Kustendil as well. Um, it was really an amazing experience, especially seeing all of the other countries that were represented and getting to see 
oh, these similarities or these stark differences between the cultures, between the, it was a dance festival, so between the diff, the different dances that were cultures going on. Coming together. Absolutely. It was really quite amazing. We made a lot of friends, a lot of really great connections um, that were really excited to hopefully use going forward um, and getting, ideally, hopefully, more representation for this in Colorado as well. Yeah. And which leads us to you've got a big anniversary coming up, your 70th anniversary. That's pretty impressive uh, event for that. Yeah, so pretty much a big deal for us. Uh, we are the oldest Asian nonprofit in Colorado. Um, hmm. And so really it's, the, it's a celebration of kind of like some of our elders who've been around, who kind of helped grow the community to what it is. Um, so we want to celebrate our what we call our life members for the Filipino community, um, but also to showcase uh, some of our cultural dances that we have um, that we could share with the city of Denver. So we have um, uh, three performers, um, the open, make that four performers for this event um, at the King Center on January 27. Tickets are still available for the performance. Um, but uh, we have uh, the Pasco, which is another Filipino organization that's going to perform. Um, definitely we'll have our Filipino-American community of Colorado cultural dancers. And then coming in from um, San Francisco, um, we'll have uh, Parangal, yes. <laughs> which <laughs> is uh, world-renowned. They travel, and we've just been so lucky to have uh, that organization uh, a part of what we're doing here with Eric Saman, who's the um, uh, one of the uh, choreographers that have been kind of flying back and forth from San Francisco to here to teach us some of the dances. And then um, we do have an Indonesian group that's going to start their out, start us off. So a lot of our instruments are percussion, and um, Jericho can talk a little bit more of that. But there's a lot of similarities between the Filipinos and some of the Indonesian dances that use a lot of the, the bells, clean time. Mm -hmm. and, and so, Jericho, um, you're more involved in the the dance end of things, the, the performance, the... More involved in, I, I would say more involved in the music side, although okay. I do, um, I am participating in a few of the dance sections as well. A musician yourself as well? Yes, yes. Um, I studied for vocal music and choral music, um, and then that's one of the reasons why Viv really pulled me in, especially preparing for the 70th, is because one of our big things that we were trying to work on was to get a live music section. It's something that we haven't had in the Filipino-American community um, in quite a long time. We used to have a, um, a banderia group, um, string instruments um, used primarily for uh, the rural sections of the music, um, but what we're working on here, like uh, Dom was saying, was primarily um, percussion mm -hmm. style instruments. We have our cooling tongue, which is a um, set of bells, basically, um, and then a lot of other indigenous instruments as well. So that was a big, big project that we were working on getting this ready for the 70th. Yeah, interesting. That'd be fun to just sit in and, and observe without being... <laughs> Polynesian or <laughs> Filipino. And again, that's the 70th anniversary, uh, January 27th at the King Center on Auraria campus. Um, well, let's get to some of the nuts and bolts. How does the money help? I know, you know, like I said earlier, being a nonprofit, it's an obvious clear question, but um, where does it all go to? Yeah, so a lot of the, you know, we own our own building, so, so some Perfect. of that is just uh, some cost to, to upkeep, you know. Yeah. Uh, we had that building from 1988. That building's probably about 60 years old. Uh, before 1988, it was like a old, um, it was an old military uh, ballroom that they had <laughs> somewhere in just a row. Just space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and they brought it over to Edgewater, you know. <laughs> Back oh, really? In, yeah, so, and that's how that built. So. Yeah, so it, it, a lot of some of it is upkeep, but uh, some of it is uh, definitely for for our programs to continue what we do. You know, a, a lot of our events are free and open to the public, and the only way that we can continue to be free and open to public is to find a way to get grants and fund programs for us. So we get a help from City of Edgewater, uh, SCFD, 
or we get grants from them united way we got a new sponsor rtd so uh, the money that we use for those pro uh, from from those grants we kind of turn it back into to our community and try to um i guess make more money <laughs> with some <laughs> of the money that we receive so we have these festivals uh like i said our, our language classes and the and something that's big for us is uh, helping those who are food insecure and those that are on home. So that's kind of the community project that we kind of lead through our community, uh, gathering clothes and um, personal items and hygiene that uh, we would go out and pass out. Uh, I live downtown Denver, so I kind of know where all these communities are. So, mm -hmm. um, so we know where, where we can drop those off. But yeah, so um, you know, festivals and programs that, that so we can continue to be uh, free going forward. So that's how it helps. And of course, Colorado shares Colorado Gives Day. You're a part of as well. Yeah. So that was something new. Colorado Gives that that is correct. And just trying to find ways to reach out to the community. Um, you know, we have partnerships with can I say Denver Seven that sure. kind of helps us put a, put ourselves on the news so they can help promote our events. Uh, uh, so having that social media exposure and that news media exposure certainly helps our, our community get the word out. Yeah. And I just want to drop your uh, website here, colorado-filipinos.org. And that's where you can find tickets to the 70th anniversary. And uh, we'll let you know how you can volunteer and donate here. And, um, well, let's just take a quick another, how about a reggae break? <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> All right, we'll be Sounds right great. back with Dom and Jericho with Filipino American Community of Colorado. Uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers with Easy Skanking. And we are back with special guests Dom and Jericho from the Filipino American Community of Colorado, the FACC. And I want to get into more of this cultural dancing with you, Jericho. Absolutely. Let's get into a little more detail with that. <laughs> Yeah, so we, that's it's been a big undertaking. We already had dances in our repertoire, but we completely redid the entire set preparing for the 70th anniversary. We've got over, I believe we have 25 new dances that we'll, we'll be debuting um, at the 70th anniversary. We're breaking it into four sets. Uh, we have the rural, which is the only one that is not going to be live music. Um, you'll hear uh, string instruments playing for that one. Um, though, and those are the more... If you look up Filipino dance, you're more likely to see a lot of the rural dances like on YouTube, things like that. So there's going to be some familiarity there for people that are attending. Um, and then we've got three indigenous uh, sets of dances. Uh, we have uh, the Taboli, um, which is, if you look at the regalia, it's just a beautiful, ornate regalia. And all of this, again, was was bought directly from these people in the, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our... Um, a, a lot of our intention with this is to honor and uplift these communities um, that are still in and actively working on these in the Philippines. Um, we also have the Maranao section, um, which is going to be... That's where a lot of our main practice has been, at least on the music side with us. We've done a lot of work with that and with the others as well. Um, and then we have the other section, which is... Ooh, I'm blanking now. I'm on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no worries. No. Um, we have the other section, which is the Kalinga. Um, and we have one of the special things that, we, um, that we've got to experience with this is having um, what they call culture bearers that are actually from these tribes, these areas in the Philippines come and directly help us with these to make sure we are honoring these people in the right way. And not only do you have the 70th anniversary coming up, what other events do you guys host or uh, perform these dances? Um, we've got a we do a lot of um, dances around in, in the communities in Colorado. Um, we do the Edgewater Festival every year, oh, okay. um, as well as our own festival that we hold in June every year, and then um, a, a, a lot of other ones. We recently did um, the uh, uh, Colorado History. Um, museum about i think that was about two months ago ish um so that was a really amazing experience and getting to again getting to work with some of the other um asian organizations in the area as well what's the one in june what, what's your own yeah so in in june uh we have our 
29th anniversary of our Philippine festival. I believe that's uh, June 15th and 16th. So, mm-hmm. uh, as soon as we get past this 70th anniversary, right. <laughs> we can start to take a little break and <laughs> then get yeah. back at it. We can refocus uh, ourselves. So that's one. But uh, and we've been doing that in the city of Edgewater at our uh, Bahai Kubo, 1900 Harlan Street. Uh, um, so basically, we're uh, celebrating our heritage and culture. We'll have a lot of different Asian uh, dancers. We'll have uh, Asian food, Filipino food specifically, but all cultures are definitely uh, welcome, whether you're Filipino or Filipino at heart. Um, before our festival in June, something that we're working on, uh, starting the works on right now, is our AAPINH, so Asian American Pacific Islander Native Hawaiian. Uh, celebration uh, month of May, so that's going to be on May 4th, and uh, um, we're g- co organizing the event with the Aurora Higher Education Center. So um, that's going to be on May 4th at the Aurora campus. Uh, we have it tentatively scheduled from 11 to 10, and it's just kind of a culmination of celebrating all the different Asian cultures uh, here in the Denver metro area. So, food, <laughs> dance, uh, music. K-pop. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's oh. not just Filipino. No, it's just not no. Filipino. We've been doing this Asian for movie. a few years now, and we started off at the Denver Zoo, and now we kind of uh, moved it into more of an open public space at the Aurora campus. Uh, so uh, be on the lookout for the, that information on our website, too, as well. Excellent. Again, that website is colorado org, and you can contact to purchase tickets to the 70th um, contact Vivian Norman or Dom Belen here. Belen? Belen? Belen. Belen. Yeah. All right. New cultures, new words, new. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's close. Uh, I've been called worse. <laughs> live, on, <laughs> live on the radio, right? <laughs> Maybe not live on the radio. <laughs> All right. Well, how can people help? How uh, how can they find you to don't, the website and. Right. Whatnot. So, you know, I, I think for us, if, if you learn about what we do, if you come to our events, see what we do, learn about how we can we contribute to the community. Um, that's the best way, you know, learn about what we do. You know, we have these events like our 70th anniversary. Um, we have our performance tickets still. We, we had a performance in gala, but our gala has been sold out for a month now. Uh, but we still do have performance tickets and, um, coming to like our uh, Asian heritage celebration in the month of May and our Philippine community event, our Philippine festival. I think that's the kind of the best way to, um, to learn about what we do and, uh, you know, just more of that awareness, you know, that, yeah. uh, for our community. Embrace mm-hmm. it. And then you can always fill out mm-hmm. an online membership application Th- at their correct. website. Absolutely. Okay. And how can people contact you beyond the website? Um, are you on every arm of social media, uh, Facebook, it, yeah, Instagram, so, uh, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. It's uh, basically Facebook or Instagram at Colorado Filipinos. So if you look up Colorado Filipinos in each of the social media, mm-hmm. Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> is there a little more content on YouTube being YouTube? Yeah. Uh, I as think far as yeah, YouTube length which... of time for the dances or that is correct so you'll see some of the dances that uh, was performed in bulgaria mm-hmm. on, on on youtube Excellent. and some of our performance at different festivals here um the colorado filipinos on instagram you know it, it kind of like gets to highlight some of more our individuals and uh some of our in a more intimate way to learn about our filipino community where there's uh pictures of our, our community on there and uh short videos um and then facebook we have a public site colorado filipinos it's just kind of a way for people to learn about our different events how they can get in involved you know we always um have a need for vendors for our events sure. so we're very big on supporting our uh, small businesses out there so and we do that with our we oh, i didn't mention but we Quarterly, we have a market uh, at our community center, and what's great about it, it's indoors. So uh, um, it's a way that for barely, basically a donation to our community. Um, you know, you can have a table, uh, show your wares, sell whatever your your business or services, and that's kind of, we do that quarterly. And okay. if you have something like that, that would 
be happy to promote uh, uh, your business at, yeah, at that event. We could uh, join you. We'll yeah, bring you our tent what? and broadcast from there. Yeah, that would be cool yeah. because something that we do that's special um, is we do have this Filipino breakfast that we sell. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, fried fish, egg, and fried rice. And basically, that's the basis for our fil- and super popular with yeah. our community. Mm-hmm. So. The basic diet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fried fish for breakfast. Fried fish that, and fried rice. That, that sounds good. Uh, once again, the Filipino American community of Colorado. They're at 1900 Harlan Street in Edgewater, Colorado, 80214. Phone number 303-233-6817. Dom and Jericho, thank you guys so much for coming in today. Um, just want to make sure we covered all the bases here. I, I think we, we did, but uh, the the Indonesian group, it just came to me. I don't know. Go it's ahead. nerve wracking <laughs> trying nope. to think of the name without looking at the There's no my time point. constraints here. Uh, uh, Gamalan Tunas Mikar. So they're the Indonesian group that's going to be performing first on our performance. So uh, shout out for them for being a part of this special event for our community. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, the FACC, Filipino American Community of Colorado, Dom and Jericho. Thank you again for coming in, joining us. Let's keep in touch, and uh, maybe we'll uh, come to you next time. Thanks for having us. Thank you.